Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'll be teaching you some easy ways to make seamless repeating patterns in Procreate. When you make a repeating pattern, it kind of feels like magic. Repeating patterns are not only super fun to make, but they have so many different applications. Patterns are great for designing fabric, apparel, surface design, web design, and more. Because of Procreate's snapping feature, it's actually really easy to make patterns right on your iPad without any additional software. Follow along with me as I teach you two methods for making patterns, a simple pattern with basic shapes and a more complex pattern with multiple layers. If you're new to Procreate, I highly recommend watching my Procreate for Beginners tutorial so you can learn all the basics. And if you wanna learn more about drawing, illustration, and of course working in Procreate, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials. Let's get started. In order for a pattern to repeat seamlessly, objects along the edges need to match up perfectly with what is on the opposite edge. Now, if the words make it line up perfectly give you anxiety, fortunately there's a really cool trick that makes it super easy to do this. To show you how it works, let me show you a quick demonstration using a piece of paper and these dinosaur stamps I borrowed from my kids. I'm going to stamp a bunch of dinos over the center of the paper, making sure that no dinosaurs go over the edge. Next, I'll cut the paper into four equal pieces like this. Now, if I move the papers from the right side to the left side, and the papers from the top to the bottom, I have instantly made an infinitely repeatable pattern. You can see that the body belonging to this head continues over here, and the top of the stegosaurus matches up with the bottom up here. I can even add more dinosaurs into the empty spots like this. Then if I move the left to the right and the top to the bottom again, those new stamps get split up and lined up to make a seamless repeat. This entire square is a block of a pattern that I can seamlessly repeat infinitely. This is exactly what we're going to be doing in Procreate, but it will be even easier to make sure that everything matches up perfectly. So I'm going to begin by creating a canvas that is 3000 by 3000 pixels large. For this pattern, I'm going to be using one of the free Procreate color palettes that I have available on my website. This one is called Yam I Am. And the brush I'm going to be using is one of the built-in Procreate brushes. This is in the inking set and it's called Syrup. We're gonna keep this really simple and just make a pattern that's made up of basic shapes. So I'll start with the darkest pink color and draw a couple of large circles on my canvas. To do this, I'm just drawing the outline and then filling them in with color drop. Next, I'll grab one of the lighter pinks and draw a triangle and maybe like a weird blobby shape. Then I will grab this gold color and do a couple more shapes, maybe like a half circle and another smaller circle. The most important thing here is that none of these objects touch the edge of the canvas. And the other thing you'll notice is that I'm not putting my shapes really close to the edge either. I'm leaving a little bit of room because we're gonna be adding more shapes there later. Okay, so we've got several shapes on the canvas with a little bit of room around the edges and of course nothing going over the edge. So the first thing I wanna show you is what this looks like as a repeating pattern without doing anything special to it. I have a tool on my website that lets you easily test how your pattern repeats. You can find this tool at bardobrush.com slash repeat. I recommend using this in the split screen view. Swipe up from the bottom and drag Safari over to the side. I've already got the page loaded up. Swipe down on the canvas with three fingers to invoke the copy paste menu, and then select copy all. What this does is it takes all of your layers, including the background, and puts them onto a single layer. And this is what we're gonna use to test our patterns. So if I swipe down again and hit paste and go up to my layers, you'll see now that I have a layer with all the shapes and the white background. Then all I have to do is tap hold and drag that layer over to the pattern tester anywhere on the page and let go. And I'll instantly see how my pattern looks when it's repeated. You can also use this slider here to adjust the scale of the pattern to see it at large and small sizes. So as you can see, there's definitely some empty spots here and that's no surprise because we left some empty space around it. So now we're going to take what we have and turn it into a repeating tile so that we can fill in the empty parts of this pattern. For this pattern, we're just gonna be working off of a single layer. 
So with the layer that I just pasted in selected, I'm gonna go to the transform tool. And this is very important. You wanna go down to where it says snapping and make sure that snapping is turned on. Having magnetics turned on too is also very handy. And then all you're gonna do is just slide that whole layer over until it's halfway off the canvas. You'll notice you'll see yellow lines and the nodes in the center of the selection will match up perfectly with the corners of the canvas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and swipe down again with three fingers and hit paste. It's gonna paste that same pattern again. And I'm gonna move this one the other way. Again, make sure that those center nodes line up with the corners. It should just snap right into place. And finally, I'm gonna just go ahead and merge those two layers together. And what I am left with is the same exact pattern, but now I have access to what were the edges are now the center of my pattern and I can fill those in with more shapes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new layer for these new shapes. And I'm gonna use the red and just kind of draw another blobby shape. And now maybe I'll pull in that green color and add a couple more shapes, some half circle, triangles. And now I'm gonna go ahead and test what that looks like. So again, I'm gonna swipe down with three fingers, choose copy all, swipe down again and choose paste. And there is my new pattern all on one layer. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that and drop it onto my pattern tester. And you can see some of those spots starting to fill in. So now I think it's pretty obvious that we haven't added anything to the top edges. So now we're going to repeat what we just did, but we're gonna move the layers to the top and bottom. So select the transform tool and move the layer up until it snaps to the halfway point. Make sure those nodes are lined up with the corners. Swipe down with three fingers again, hit paste, and then we're gonna move that downwards until it hits that halfway point. And then I'll go ahead and merge those two layers together, create a new layer to draw in some shapes into those empty spots. And I'm also kind of just paying attention that all my colors are spread out. I've got a variety of not only shapes, but also sizes, like there's some big things and some little things. I'm gonna copy all again and paste the layer in so that I can test and see how that's looking. Now looking at the pattern test, I'm just, I'm really getting into the nitty gritty here and just looking for any little empty spaces that I might wanna fill in. And I can see a space right here, kind of between this large circle and the plus sign and the little red half circle. Now looking at my pattern, I can see that that spot is right on an edge. So I'm just gonna move it side to side like I did before so that I have access to draw in that little hole without it being on an edge. So I'll just add a little shape right there, copy all and paste, and then I'll drop it onto the pattern tester. And now I can see that pretty much all the little spots are filled in. You could keep going as much as you like with this if you wanna fill in more spots and add things to it, but I think this looks pretty good. Another fun thing that I can do is go to the adjustments menu, hue, saturation, brightness, and then layer. And then I can just adjust the hue slider to kind of get like a whole nother color scheme of this same pattern. I'll drag that onto the pattern tester just to kind of see what it looks like all together. Next, I'm gonna show you how to do a more complex pattern with artwork that utilizes multiple layers. So we're gonna create a new canvas. And I wanted you to know that you do not have to set up your pattern as a square. You can do any aspect ratio that you want. I'm gonna be using my medium res canvas size that I use for just about everything. It is 3800 by 2800 pixels. And again, I'm going to be using the syrup brush from the inking set. And I'm gonna select a nice bright pink to draw some strawberries. I'm gonna draw three big strawberry shapes. They're kind of like rounded triangular shapes. And then I'm going to create a new layer to draw some green stems. And for the stems, I'm actually not gonna use any brushes at all. I'm going to use the selection tool with the color fill feature. So go to the selection tool and make sure that color fill is selected down here. And then let's zoom in on this strawberry and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap all the way around until I make kind of like a stem shape with some like spiky leaves sticking off of it. And the color will be filled in automatically because I have color fill turned on. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for the other two strawberries. And because I have them on their own layer, I can move them around if I didn't quite get them where I wanted them to be. 
And another benefit of having them on their own layer is that I can apply a blend mode to do kind of a cool transparency effect. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to multiply. And you'll see it has kind of this cool darkening effect where the two overlap. Now I'm gonna go back to the layer that has the pink strawberries on it. And I'm gonna choose kind of a yellow color and then I'm gonna grab the Mercury brush, which is in that same inking set. These are all built-in Procreate brushes, so you should have them. And then with a flicking motion, I'm gonna draw in some seeds all over these strawberries. And then I'm gonna add in one more element. I kinda of wanna have something going on in the background. So I'm going to create another new layer. I'm gonna place it below the other two layers. And I'm gonna select an even lighter pink and then using that same selection tool method, I'm gonna draw just some weird little quadrilateral shapes, just kind of like behind everything. Again, it's important to mention that you wanna make sure that nothing is touching the edges and that there's also some space. Everything's not like crammed right close to the edges. And that pink looks a little too dark for me and since I still have the selection tool active, I can just adjust the color on the fly like this. It's a pretty cool feature. And then I'm also gonna set the blend mode of the strawberry layer to multiply so I have a little bit of that transparency effect showing those background shapes too. Okay, so we've got what we could call the first round of our artwork ready to go, and now we're gonna set it up as a tile. So if we wanna preserve our layers, we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently than we did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these layers and put them into a group. In order for our artwork to be able to snap into place precisely, we need to make sure that we're moving the entire shape of the canvas. If we were to move just the artwork, it's not the same size as the canvas, so it wouldn't line up correctly. So we're gonna need to create another layer that helps us out with that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new layer and then fill this layer with black. Then I'll reduce the opacity of the layer to about like 25%. And then before we move anything, we're going to duplicate our artwork group. Select the black layer and one of the groups, and then move it over halfway, just like we did in the previous example. Now we have access to that space where the edges used to be, what now becomes the middle of our pattern, and we can start adding more strawberries. But before we do that, I like to kind of consolidate the layers and clean it up a little bit so it doesn't get like way too many layers and get all crazy. So I'll select the two stem layers and group them, and then select the two strawberry layers and group them and then the two background shape layers and group them. Then I'll go through and flatten each of these layers. Just tap on the group and hit flatten. And then I've got this other empty group, so I'll just delete that. All right, so everything is nice and organized and we don't have any extraneous layers. So now I'm gonna go to my strawberry layer and draw in a new strawberry just like before. I'll sample the pink color from the other strawberries and draw in a couple of strawberry shapes. And you'll notice I'm drawing my strawberries not all in the same direction. If I were to print this on fabric or something like that, I'm kind of going for a pattern that doesn't have like a top and a bottom and up and down. It doesn't have to go a certain way. You can use it any way you want. I'll use the same technique with the selection tool to add in some more stems. And then I'll grab the mercury brush and draw in some seeds in yellow. And then I'll fill in the background area here with another of those kind of squarish light pink shapes. All right, now we're gonna tile this vertically. So we're gonna move the top to the bottom and vice versa. Um, so we're gonna repeat the same thing. So we're gonna turn on our black guide layer and then fill it in so the canvas is completely full. Otherwise the, the snapping won't work properly. I'm gonna duplicate the group, select one of the groups and the guide layer. And this time we're gonna move it down. Fill in the guide layer completely, grab the other group, and move it up. Again, always be sure that your center nodes line up with the corners. Turn off that black layer. I'm gonna repeat that process to consolidate all my layers. Just select the two stem layers, group them. Same with the other two, group, group. Flatten, flatten, flatten. All right, now I can draw in more strawberries to kind of fill in all these little empty spots. I'll do the strawberry shapes on the strawberry layer, the green stems on the stem layer, and then finally some more light pink shapes on the background layer. 
All right, so this is looking pretty good. We've pretty much filled in all the spots. So now we're gonna check and see what this looks like as a completely repeating pattern. So swipe down with three fingers to pull up copy paste menu, select copy all, swipe down with three fingers again and hit paste. And there is our completed pattern all flattened. I'm just gonna move that to the top so it doesn't look so weird. And then I'm gonna drag that over into my pattern tester. And if I scroll down, I can see kind of it without that info box <laughs> and you can see what the pattern looks like. And this is really helpful because just looking at this, I can see I have kind of a weird thing happening where it looks like there's like a stripe of blank space going all the way down. So I'm gonna look and kind of see where that's happening in my pattern and maybe change some of the strawberries so it fills that space. So looking at my pattern, I can see that blank space is actually here on the edges. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to tile it again so that I can have access to draw into that space or move things around. So I'll delete that flattened layer, I don't need that. I'm gonna duplicate the group, turn on the black layer, make sure it's fully filled in, select the black layer in one of the groups and move it to the side, repeat the same with the other group. And as I do this, I can see that things weren't lined up perfectly when I slid it over to the side. So make sure you pay attention because if you don't get it in the right spot, you might have like weird lines like this. So I'm just gonna undo that and try again. And this time I got it, no problem. Sometimes it happens. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do is just, instead of drawing in more strawberries, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move some around. So I'm gonna select the layer with the strawberries and the stems, select both layers, and then use the selection tool to kinda select those strawberries, move them around, change the scale, kind of fill in that area. And then I'm also gonna kind of change, I didn't really like these triangle shapes, how I did them in the background, so I'm gonna delete those and make a couple new shapes. Move around some of these other background shapes, just kind of refining it until it looks exactly as I want it to look. And of course I can test it by swiping down with three fingers, copy all, swipe down again, paste. And now I have that flattened version that I can drag that layer over into the pattern tester and that looks way better. I hope this tutorial has got you super excited about making patterns. I have made a ton of patterns over the course of my career and every time I tile a pattern block, it always feels like magic. Before we wrap up, I wanted to show you a few patterns that I've made in Procreate and how I use those patterns to make t-shirts and fabric. This is an artwork that I made, not intending it to be a repeating pattern, but it is kind of like a pattern. Um, this was actually a prompt for making art every day. The prompt was wishes, and this is my interpretation of that prompt, and I thought it was really cute. So I actually redrew it, and I made it into a repeating pattern using the same techniques that I've shown you today. So this is what that looks like. And I've actually had this one printed onto fabric uh, from Spoonflower, which is a really awesome company. They print artwork and design on fabric and a bunch of other stuff, but uh, this is the fabric that I got. I think it's super cute and I'm excited to make it into something. This is a snake with flowers that I drew a couple years ago and I thought it'd make, make a really fun pattern. So this is the pattern that I made with that. You can see that I flipped the snake around and like mirrored it, turned it over and just like arranged them all kind of in almost like a grid. And then I also added in some additional flower shapes and leaf shapes to kind of fill in the holes. And that's what this pattern looks like. And I also had this one printed onto fabric as well. Um, I went with this kind of like nice drapey blousey fabric. And so maybe I'll make it into a skirt or a shirt or something like that, I don't know. I'm excited to try it. These banana shirts my husband and I are wearing are made using a pattern I drew in Procreate. Not gonna lie, it's pretty much his favorite shirt. In fact, so much that he wore it out and I had to make him a new one. Uh, this time I made it with an updated banana pattern and that is this shirt here. This is another pattern I had printed onto fabric from Spoonflower. I love these little zebras. Maybe you guys can think of some fabric projects for me to make with these in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to learn more about drawing, illustration, and of course, working in Procreate. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot, and I teach people how to find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. 
I'm the owner of Bardo Brush, one of the leading brush creators for Procreate. If you'd like to support me, I hope you'll take a look at my premium brush sets that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. I also run the Making Art Everyday Challenge, a free series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials, motivation, and a supportive community, all with the goal of helping you overcome your creative fears and establish a daily art making practice. This tutorial is actually a part of our Make Stuff May, a whole month dedicated to making things with your art. Learn more at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. If you're posting artwork to Instagram made with my brushes or tutorials, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag bardobrush. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.